We're gonna do something today that I don't think anyone's ever done. We're gonna do a lure design, mold build, go out and catch a fish. I'm particularly excited about this because I don't think anyone's also made a dip tube for a catfish. This is a uh, dip bait for catfish. And, and this is really gross stuff. You don't wanna get this on your clothes. It's absolutely disgusting. I call it poop bait, personally. It's literally like mushed up poop in a tub. But channel catfish specifically love this stuff. You put this on a dip bait, which is designed to hold this, this gooey sticky bait onto it on a hook. You throw it out in a river or lake and the scent attracts catfish to it. They find it and they bite it and boom, you catch catfish. We have a lot of this stuff. So we're gonna make a bait for this today and go fishing with it. We're gonna start off by getting out our hook, which is a Whisker Seeker triple threat it's kind of like a circle hook, but it's a little uh, modified. We're gonna start with this. So we're gonna do a rough outline of it. And then we're gonna start designing off this. So I wanna make a, like a, a worm bait, like a tube style bait, probably two and a half inches long. When designing baits, you have to remember that everything that needs to be cut on a CNC machine. So you can't have sharp edges, square corners, everything needs to kind of be rounded so that the tooling, which is all round that the machine uses, can get into those corners. We're making a hole through the center of the bait and this will be shoved into there and then the so we just need to make sure that the hole is bigger than the shank diameter here which is just under 330 seconds of an inch so that's it it's a super basic design the hook will sit down in the middle of it. Even if this slides up a little further, it's still gonna get a hookup ratio, a good hookup ratio because that's gonna collapse. And again, this is a six out hook. You could go bigger, but for channel cats, that's pretty beefy of a hook. The reason we made this sketch was so that I could actually bring that sketch into Fusion 360, which is what we use to do all of our modeling programming. And I can actually reference this sketch to design my bait. And I already went ahead and did that. So you can see I already designed the bait here. I actually made it a little thinner. I'm gonna print a 3D model so that I can see if I actually like the size of it. And if we need to, we'll make it fatter. Otherwise, I really like that skinnier profile. This is Cura. It's a slicing software used to slice uh, a model to print it on a 3D printer. But this allows me to see the size of the bait before we go into hours of programming and designing tool paths. So when the model's in here, I basically slice it. And when you slice it, you're creating layers of how the printer's gonna print it layer by layer. And that's what this is right here. I can actually rewind this and pull this up and you can see that's how it's gonna actually build the model. All right, the print is done. Here is our print all finished up and you can see this is actually a base we created on here so that it's stuck to the build plate. So I should be able to just pull this off in theory. Not very easy though. Here we go. See if I can get this off. Oh yeah. So this is a 3D print just to quickly get a reference for what the size of this bait is gonna look like. And there'll be a hole through the center that's about 330 seconds of an inch in diameter. If I hold this up here, you can see how that's gonna fit on there. I actually like that a lot. You know what I just realized? That might make a killer Ned bait. While that was printing, I went ahead and designed this. This is the full mold. You'll put your injector in here, shoot down here. This is a 3 8 three eighths inch channel or sprue, and it'll fill the baits from there. We'll put venting on the top and bottom of all this. And then these little guys at the end, those are where core rod will go across. So when you shoot, there'll be a rod in here. When you shoot, 
you pull, pull the baits out and you pull the rod out, you'll be left with a hollow center on your baits, which is where the, the hook, right here, the hook will go through that and so will your line. And if you wanted to, you could actually put them back in there, shoot a second color in the center, you'd have a solid bait, but then you'd have two colors, which would be really cool. We only have about two hours of daylight left, so I'm gonna get this thing wrapped up, get the program put on it. I'm gonna get it in the machine, get a cut, grab the poles, and get out to the local river and see what we can catch. a couple two inch slick swims in there. Awesome bait. There's a lot of burying to do on this. Holy cow. All right, so I got my fan going to suck the fumes out of the area. Got my mold, put my little uh, worm oil on my fingers, put that on the rods, putting the rods in there. Just don't need a ton of oil, just a little bit. And I put my clamps on. Whenever you put clamps on, put them on opposite corners. If you put them both on the top and you inject, push hard, it'll split the mold open in the bottom and the plastic will come out the bottom. I am heating up some, or remelting some bright red. And this is a saltwater blend from Bait Plastics, it's about 315. And I'm trying to get it up to about 340. Maybe a little hotter. I don't want to shoot super cold, especially with the uh, core rods in there. The core rods will actually cause the plastisol to shrink even faster as it's traveling around that core rod. Okay, we are at 350. Hold pressure for about 10 seconds. I'm not pushing super hard. Just putting a little arm weight on it. Gonna set this on another mold to suck the heat out of it, cool it down a little faster. See what we got. That's pretty good. We got one that didn't come out, it looks like it had air in it, but all the other ones look pretty good. <laughs> that is the craziest thing I've ever seen. This is what we just pulled out of the mold. So now I'm just going to pull there, separate that, slide that off. Pull this out from the other end. And if you forget the worm oil, they'll still come off. It'll just be a lot harder. All right, so there's our four baits. Let's go test them out. This is so flooded here. I did not think it'd be this flooded. Um. Okay, this is not gonna work. This is about six feet higher than it usually is. Just for the sake of it, let's try. And then we're here. And I want the fat end at the bottom, so I gotta start with the skinny part. See if I can thread this on. Okay, there we go. 
And that's a float to float it off the bottom. Need a stick. Oh, what a piece of crap. No pun intended. Okay, so just smashing it on there. Smash some more on the other side. And there you go. Just want a big ball of poop, basically. So now I'm gonna get over here and just kind of toss it right along this, where this water is really ripping. I want to go right to the right of that. So I'm down in there, but not getting pulled out. Just gonna leave that one right there and get another one ready. I think my conclusion is that this doesn't stick to plastic all that well. So I'm not too sure sure about this nugget number two but i feel like the second i cast in there it's gonna be gone i think i'm just gonna go back through here it's been about 25 30 minutes and i think wow well, that's a little tangled i think i'm gonna call it it's just not the right weather right now. The, the river is obviously way too high for this. Worst idea ever. It is the next day and it is very windy out here. I came to a new spot, this time a lake, which hopefully won't be too blown out from all the rain we've got, but we're gonna try to catch some cats here. We're gonna use some Charlies today. Woo. Like I said, it's super windy. Fresh tub here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Brought myself a stick. Just gonna get one out there as fast as possible. And this is actually a smaller hook. I uh, have my, my ice fishing rods only today. Doesn't stick very good. Huh. Maybe if I put some down, take another glob and go on the other side. Okay, well I would say this is failing big time. <laughs> this stuff is not as doughy as the other one. This is Danny King's catfish punch bait. Let's see if this one's a little more doughy. Oh God, there's like hair in that one. Oh, what the heck? Look at that stuff. It's like they just ground up a bunch of rabbits or something. God. I'm gonna regret this on the way home. There we have it, it's gross. Now, I have to do another one, which really sucks, because that was nasty. Put this one on the other way with the fat end up. See what that looks like. Why don't I put a little water in there? Oh, yeah. A little water in there. Even more gross. It's about all I'm going to get, I think. It's not very sticky. Oh, we just had a bite. I'm gonna let him eat it. Let's go. Oh yeah. <laughs> there it is. Had to turn to get out of the wind, but there it is guys. First cat on the bait. It's barely fit in his mouth. Good thing we used that small hook. Let's get this guy unhooked. Not a bad little fish. Pretty small though. Let's get this guy back and see if we can get a bigger one. We well, just got back home. It's safe to say the car smells like poop from all that poop bait. Can't wait to get this stuff out of here. I think overall the baits worked uh, pretty good. They shot all right, and they actually held the dough on there. The problem is you had to really squeeze the dough on there so that it got stuck on all these ribs here. But once it was on those ribs, you could really just fling it out there. And 
it pretty much stayed in place. So I'll go ahead. I'll put I'll put that up on the site. If you guys want it, go check it out. Uh, I would just in the search bar at the top type in dip bait or catfish, and that'll pop up. I'm gonna get back in the shop, get things running. Let me know in the comments what else you want to see. You want to see us do uh, more build to catch stuff, or just more, you know, trial and error. It's, uh, that's what this channel's about. It's about having fun, trying new things, and showing you guys the process and the steps we take. Also, I think one of the biggest things I actually learned from that was that ribbing style is really cool. I'm actually going to turn that into a some kind of Ned, or maybe a worm and a creature bait with really heavy ribs. So if you if that sounds cool to you, stay tuned because over the next month or so, I will get those designed and put up on the site. 